Hello, welcome to your lesson on Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Let's begin. This is a great topic. But before beginning, we should talk about bivariate data. Our understanding of Spearman's rank correlation coefficient relies on us uh, backtracking a little bit and reminding ourselves what this is. So we have bivariate data. It's data that appears on two axes. So we have a independent axis and a dependent axis. We can plot a scatter plot. And when we have a scatter plot, we can look for a correlation. As a reminder, when we looked at correlation, we measured it using something called the Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient, otherwise known as the R value. An R value can be between negative 1 and 1, where 0 represents no correlation, 1 represents a perfect positive correlation, and negative 1 represents a perfect negative correlation. So here's some visuals of that. We have this data, this scatter data, which looks like it follows a perfect linear trend. Therefore, perfect positive correlation, r equals 1. Here the scatter plot shows no trend, no correlation, r equals 0. And here we see a perfect negative correlation, r equals negative 1. And it's negative because as the independent variables increase, the dependent variables decrease. And as a reminder, in general, the rules were, or the, the guidelines were, between 0 and 0.25 is considered a very weak correlation. Between 0.25 and 0.5, weak correlation. Between 0.5 and 0.75, moderate correlation. And 0.75 to 1, strong correlation. Okay, so here's an example we've looked at in the past. We were looking for the correlation between vaccine doses received by babies and infant mortality rate. And we had data from many nations around the world. And we can see that there is a little bit of a trend to the data. It seems to be rising up like that, right? So as a baby gets more vaccine doses, there is a higher infant mortality rate in that country. We found the correlation of that on Desmos by running a regression and the R value is given right here. So from that R value, we can say that it is a moderate positive linear correlation. Moderate because remember we need greater than 0.75 to say it's uh, strong. So we say moderate. So there's kind of a medium level of correlation. And we can see that the data is quite spread out from this line, which is the best fit line. Okay, so what about this data set? We have this data set here, and it looks like this when we plot the scatter plot. First question, is the relationship strong? How would you describe it? Uh, it certainly is strong. Um, we can see the points follow a very distinct curve. They're not, if you drew a curve through them, they're not spread out from that curve, they're right along that curve. So there's definitely a strong relationship. It's positive, but it's also increasing. Um, using your GDC, find the R value. So remember on our calculator, we can enter this into, into our stat mode, into edit, and then we can look for the correlation coefficient. If you don't have a calculator, try online. There's lots of online places to find a correlation coefficient. So the R value is this. That tells us it is a moderate positive correlation. Um, but how can that be? This looks like a very strong relationship, a strong correlation. So why would the R value indicate kind of a weak correlation? Not necessarily weak, this is moderate, but the graph shows a strong correlation. Well, that is because it's nonlinear. When we find that R value, it is meant to be a measure of linear correlation, and this data is not linear. So that kind of leads to the natural question, well, what do we do when data has a strong relationship like this one, but it's nonlinear? And just so you can see with that data, uh, that R value comes from trying to fit this line to that data. So again, the data is nonlinear, but by running this regression, getting this R value, we're trying to force a line onto that data. And that shows that we're, that line is not a perfect model. Therefore, R value is 0.726. Okay, so here's another example. We have hours of study and test results for a group of students. That, when we plot it, looks like this. So here's the scatter plot. Um, here we can say we can see that it does have a linear trend. It seems to follow kind of a line when you look at the trend. Therefore, the correlation coefficient, the Pearson correlation coefficient, is 0.97. Quite strong, very strong, very strong linear, uh, positive linear correlation. Okay, here's some more data. Number of minutes 
uh, and the temperature of an oven. So let's say you set an oven to, to 180 degrees. You can see that this first the temperature is going up and then it plateaus at 180 because maybe it was set to maximum 180. That data when plotted looks like this. So even if the oven's on for a long time, it remains at 180 because that's what you set the oven on. So again, strong relationship here, but this one's not linear. So you can see the correlation coefficient is 0.73 because again, the Pearson correlation coefficient is for linear data. So here it shows like it's not strong, but it is. All right, so when we are using Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, here's some more examples of that. Uh, it works for linear data. However, what happens if there appears to be a relationship but the correlation does not appear to be linear? What do we do? For example, here this one's linear, but this one is not. Yet this one here seems to show a stronger relationship than this one, right? There's less spread of this data. It just seems to curve. So what do we do with data like that? Let's take a look. The answer to that question is Spearman's correlation coefficient. It is a measure of the strength of relationship between paired data, specifically monotonic data. Let's talk about what that means. But first of all, our RS, which is our Spearman's correlation coefficient, it's just like our R value, but now it has that little sub S there to, to signify its Spearman's correlation. It lies between negative one and one, just like we had for Pearson was between negative one and one. So is this one. Uh, in terms of what is monotonic data, well, here is monotonic data, here is also monotonic data, but this is not. So this measure, Spearman's correlation coefficient, is best for monotonic data. And what, <clears throat> what monotonic means is as one variable uh, changes in one way, the other one changes as well. So here, for example, as the x values go up, y values go down. Here, as x values go up, y values go up. Here, though, as x values go up, y values first go up and then down. So that's non-monotonic. There has to be uh, consistency in how the, the relationship is. And here again, we have C the values here. This is a little more detailed than the other scale we had. We see here 0.8 to 1 is very strong, 0.6 to 0.79 is strong, and so on. So it works just like uh, Pearson, but it's for non-monotonic or non-linear data. Let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so here's our first example. We're going to do this on Desmos. We have data about mold growing in a Petri dish. Here's the amount of nutrients you put in the Petri dish, and here is the area. It says area of the Petri dish covered in mold after 48 hours. So you can see if you put a lot of nutrients in the Petri dish, you have a lot of mold growing across the area of that Petri dish. Or if you put just a little bit of nutrients in there, you have less area covered in mold in the Petri dish. So let's put this in uh, in Desmos. Okay, in Desmos, to add a table of values, we press plus and table. So make sure you're doing this on your computer. You're going to have to answer some questions based on your results. Let's enter that data now. So first data point is 5.68 and 6. Okay, 5.68 six continue down the table entering all this data okay here we go i've entered the data i hope you have as well i'm going to move this a little bit so i can see all the data okay there's the shape of the data i'm going to go back to here and there's the shape again so here's the shape of the data uh, you can see it's non-linear there's that curve to it but we're going to try to find the linear correlation first so first now we're going to run a linear regression to get the r value okay not the rs value the r value so how do you do that in Desmos? To remind you, we're going to go here and put Y1. We're going to use this symbol right here. Remember that tells Desmos to run a regression. And we're going to enter a linear equation, MX1 and B plus B. And the reason I used Y1 and, M, and X1 is because that's what our table is here, right? So I put in linear equation in with that symbol, meaning give me a regression or give me a line of best fit and it created this line of best fit here. So you can see the line it created for that data is pretty good. It's pretty close to all the points and we can see an R value given right here. So that's our Pearson product moment correlation. So I have that appearing here as well. There is the product, sorry, the Pearson correlation coefficient shows a pretty good, strong, positive correlation. And we can see that here, pretty strong. Uh, okay, so um, there it is. Now let's, let's do something different with the data. Okay, so that's the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. Now, we're going to take the data and we're going to rank it because we're going to do the Spearman's rank correlation. It's a little bit different. What we do when we rank it is we look at our data table 
and we say we rank the data. So we make a new table with ranking from one. In this case, we have eight pieces of data, so they'll be ranked one to eight. And when you do ranking, you can either rank lowest to greatest or greatest to lowest. In this case, we're going to do greatest being number one and lowest being number eight. So notice we put one and one in here because in the X and Y values, in, wait, let's just look at X. In the X values, the greatest one is eight. So we're calling that number one. And what's the next greatest one? We're going to put a two there. Which letter would you use for that? Okay, the next greatest one is F because you can see this one here is 6.72. Okay, what's the third greatest one? So we're going to call that number three. We're going to rank it as number three. Well, it's this one right here. That 5.68 is, is the next greatest. And then so on and so on, you can fill in all the values here. So we've ranked all these values from greatest to least. And do the same thing for Y now, for the Y values. And first one's done for you. Okay, so if you rank those, what you should notice is they're identical to the X ones. So in other words, when we have the greatest one here, it also produces the greatest one here. So in other words, the greatest um, amount of nutrients put in the Petri dish leads to the greatest amount of uh, mold in it, or the least amount of nutrients leads to the least mold. So there's a direct relationship there. Uh, and that's what Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is going to measure. So now plot those points. We plot those in a table, and we notice now when we made a table in Desmos of rankings that we have a perfect linear relationship. And that's showing that, again, that there's a perfect relationship between this value and this one. The rankings, are like the number one ranked one here is number one here, and the number three here is number three here. So it shows a strong relationship. So now the strong relationship that we saw in the, if I go back in the curve, we see a strong relationship. That strong relationship now comes out in a linear form when we ranked it. So that's the important thing here. So there it is. And now when we run our linear regression on that, we can clearly see it gives a perfect positive correlation value of 1. All right. But that value normally would be called Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. But for when we rank the data and run it like that, now it is called the Spearman's rank order correlation coefficient. So it's found the same way, like if we're doing our calculator, it's found the same way, but it's on the ranked data. So really important point. Let's try another one. In another experiment, the temperature T is varied, and the area of the Petri dish covered after 48 hours is recorded. So this time, instead of varying um, the nutrients we give, we vary the temperature of the Petri dish, and we see what happens with the mold. So for example here, uh, we see temperatures here, and we see the amount of mold. And you can kind of see a trend here. As temperatures increase, the amount of mold decreases. But is it a perfect relationship? Let's check. As we did that before, as we did that before, put it on Desmos, make a new table with these values, and see what the curve looks like. Okay, so here's mine. I didn't have this on Desmos, but basically looks like that. So your Desmos graph or scatter plot should look similar. Now, this one doesn't seem to have as strong of a relationship. Let's, let's check it out. So find, first of all, um, do a linear regression using the, y, uh, the, the squiggly symbol instead of equals and, and y1 or y2 or whatever this table is. Set it up, and what do you get for the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient? Well, in this case, it's this value. So it shows a negative correlation. That's great. And it looks pretty strong still, pretty strong. Now let's rank this one. Let's make a ranked table as well. So rank these values, and let's see what you get. So here's a ranked table. The temperatures are ranked here. I guess I have the lowest temperature as, sorry, the highest temperature as 1, lowest temperature as 8. Again, you could have done it the other way. And then for these ones, uh, they're ranked as well in order. Now enter that table and see what you get as your new R value, which is going to be our Spearman R value. So this time, here's our ranked data. Here's the data when it looks like that, the ranked data plotted. And you can see there's a little bit of an anomaly here. And that's because you can see in the original rankings that here 1 and 8 are together, and here 8 and 2 are together. So there's a little bit of imperfection, or other ones don't match up as well, right? There's a little bit of imperfection in how these correspond to one another. So that is showing up here. And now run the regression and see what you get for R value. This time, the R value is right here. It's still a very strong negative correlation, but not perfect. Uh, and we can see the rankings were a little bit different. All right, a couple more for you to try. Try this one, A. Find the correlation coefficient for that. You can continue using Desmos if you want. So rank those and then find the R value. All right, here's the answer for the first one. That one might have been tricky. Uh, the important thing to note there is 
that we have two values that are the same, like the 23, 23, and therefore we call them 4.5, 4.5. Check the, what it says here very carefully. Now try B and check your work here. And now here's one more. And check your work here. 